good morning and thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Representative Marsha Hubby Wright and also with me today is James, James Cliff from the Michigan Environmental Council and Dan Schoonmaker from uh, West Michigan Environmental Action Council. And today we're here to talk about hydraulic fracturing, uh, which is also known as fracking. Fracking is a growing practice in this state and others, and we need to make sure that it is properly regulated. Fracking involves drilling thousands of feet below the ground and pumping large amounts of chemically treated water uh, with sand into the ground to release natural gas deposits that are inaccessible uh, by other methods. Vertical fracturing is not new to Michigan. We have been uh, fracking oil and gas since 1952, so over 60 years. However, new horizontal fracking uh, wells are taking the industry to a whole new level. Uh, instead of drilling 3,000 feet below the surface, horizontal operations go as far as 10,000 feet, three times, underground. And instead of using thousands of gallons of water, we are looking at billions of gallons being pumped into fracking wells forever. This also means more chemicals and more land are being used. It's, a, it's just imperative that these chemicals do not contaminate our groundwater or our soil. According to uh, the EPA, there are 930 different chemicals that have been used in fracking, in the fracking process. And these chemicals could pollute the air, the soil, and most importantly, our drinking water. We worry that many of these chemicals, such as arsenic, cadmium, and others, could lead to a rise in health and environmental problems. And we need to make sure that Michiganders and our water are safe. This, <laughs> this is why we want drilling companies to fully disclose the chemicals they use in the fracking process. In addition, this process could use billions of gallons of water. Currently, oil and gas companies are exempt from state law in regards to reporting how much water they use. According to the DEQ, there are 52 active permits and 70, excuse me, 17 pending permits for fracking operations. Based on data we collected, we estimate the proposed water use for these operations is 500 million gallons. On top of that, Encana Corporation, which is the largest fracking uh, company in Michigan, has proposed 500 new wells, extracting an estimated 4 billion gallons of water. That's roughly 4.5 billion uh, gallons of Great Lakes water taken out of our uh, watershed. Once the water is used for fracking, we cannot reclaim it. It's totally out of the system. This is a great concern of mine. Once this water is contaminated, combined with fracking chemicals, the water cannot be recycled. Um, I asked if there was a process for that uh, among some environmentals, and apparently, you know, we could use evaporation or whatever, but it's just so costly that it, it, it uh, becomes not possible. Um, it is no longer available and is hauled away and injected into deep rock layers. Um, with already historically low levels that we've experienced this year, we can, can we really afford to extract more water? What's more, Encana has publicly stated that their large investment in fracking is so they can ship natural gas to Asia. Right. Given our Great Lakes heritage, we need, to use, we need to use our water responsibly. We need to make sure that there will be enough water in our lakes and streams, not only to provide Michiganders with <coughs> safe drinking water, but also to allow fish to thrive and farmers to irrigate their crops and tourists to enjoy the beautiful beaches of Lake Michigan. We want to make sure that gas companies are transparent when it comes to what chemicals they use and what happens to the water after the fracking process is over. We want to make sure that the public doesn't suffer adverse health effects resulting in fracking operations. Michigan families should have the water quality that they have come to expect. And if drinking, excuse me, fracking companies pollute our water, we need to hold them accountable. Our bills, it's a series of eight bills, take a common sense approach to fracking. 
We understand that the natural gas industry is an important segment of our economy, but so is agriculture and tourism. And fracking has the potential to negatively impact these vital drivers of our economic, our state's economy. This is a growing concern among 15 different communities across the state and local units of government are weighing in on the issue. We are taking a stand by creating a strong set of rules to keep the public and our water safe. We have concerns about what fracking does to our air, land, and water. Here to talk about some of these concerns is James Clift of the Michigan Environmental Council. James. Thank you very much. Um, we, we applaud this effort today. We have been asking the administration and the legislature to really reevaluate our regulation of fracking in Michigan. Um, a lot of the exemptions they've been given were given decades ago at a time where this practice was done on a very small scale. And they have not been reevaluated to look at what happens when you're instead of using 50 to 80,000 gallons of water, you're using 20 to 25 million gallons of water. So, and that's when we passed the water withdrawal assessment process back in 2008. They were at the 50 to 80,000 gallon level. Now it's 20, 25 million gallons. So we've been asked, let's re-examine each of those exemptions. Disclosure of chemicals, the 90 day confidentiality period after drilling where the public learns nothing about what may have happened at a well. Um, we think that we need to bring the public in on this process. And they need, there needs to be transparency. We need to kind of shine light on what chemicals are being used, when, you know, can these companies do different practices that will make this a safer practice that can protect Michigan water. You know, we have been fairly lucky up until now. We haven't had some of the major problems we've seen around the country. But what we haven't seen is people recognizing the increased risk of these new operations. You know, fracking segments that go two miles underground, underneath some of our inland lakes. Examine those risks and make sure that our laws today are commensurate with those risks. We don't think they're there, and that's why we are very supportive of this action being taken today. And now a few comments from Dan from the West Michigan Environmental Action Council. Thank you, Dan. Until the recent past, fracking has been largely a academic and uh, even somewhat hypothetical issue in the West Michigan area. Uh, it's something that we've been afforded the luxury of being afraid of things happening in other states happening here. Well, in the fairly recent past, it started to happen here. We now see permits uh, nearly being enacted, uh, not far from this location in Ravenna. We have wells being drilled in Ionia. Uh, in Kent County, which is a fairly developed region, 8.8% of the region is currently under lease for fracking operations. And the percentage is obviously higher in more rural communities like Muskegon, Ionia, and Berry counties. This is not something that we really have the luxury to wait on any longer in this region or anywhere else in the states. Nor is it something that we can really afford to allow the industry to learn on the job. But these bills take a fairly common sense approach and a very practical and pragmatic approach to ensuring that the industry does not learn from its mistakes and damage our environment in the process. Thank you, James, and thank you, Dan. Um, as James said, we want to create a set of rules um, that everyone can get behind. Because public health is not a Democratic or Republican issue. It's a bipartisan issue. Water quality should not pit corporations against individuals and the public. Being more transparent means we can uh, make more informed decisions. That's what these bills are about. First and foremost, we want drilling companies to disclose the chemicals they use during the fracking process, including the so-called trade secrets. The public has a right to know what is in our water. The public's right to know what is in our water outweighs any corporate claims of confidentiality using these chemicals. Second, the public and local communities currently have no say in fracking operation that could be in their own community. Under this package of bills, uh, 
require public participation in the permitting process and allow local units of government to what to say about how it's frack, uh, about fracking. This way, all the fracks are known. Excuse me, all the facts are known <laughs> before a do. permit is issued. <laughs> all the fracks do. Um, all stakeholders, including citizens, have a right to be heard. Another bill, which is mine, would create a public advisory committee composed of local governments, industry representatives, environmental groups, and members of the academic community to study and make recommendations about safe records. Legislation would increase the distance between fracking operations and residential areas and apply it to schools, hospitals, daycares, and public parks. It would require certain fracking operations to test for adverse impacts on water resources. And if chemicals are associate, associated with fracking are found in nearby groundwater, our legislation would hold them liable. We need to make sure that fracking companies are being honest about what they are doing with our land and our water. We cannot sacrifice public health so those corporations can make bigger profit and send it to Asia. We can't put our water, our uh, streams and rivers and inland lakes, some of our most precious resources, at risk. We want to work with legislators on both sides of the, of the aisle along with the environmental groups and those in the natural gas industry to get these bills passed into